In this video, we're going to be talking about some protection devices that we find on all gas heating equipment, and that's limits and switches. We're going to start with the high limit switch because this is probably one of the most important ones. The high limit switch is a bimetal switch that will open if the furnace exceeds a predetermined temperature. This temperature is usually at about 200 degrees. Some are manually reset, others are automatic reset. Then the rollout switch, it looks very similar to the high limit switch. It also has a bimetal switch that opens if the flame rolls out and touches the switch. Some of these are manually reset and automatically reset. Now, if you look at these two switches, they really look very identical to each other. The difference is going to be the placement. Okay, the high limit switch you're going to find on the top of the heat exchanger, on the top of the blower um, housing, and in other higher areas of the furnace. Okay, some are hidden sometimes, so you have to use your meter and you have to try to find where the open is in the circuit. The rollout switch is always going to be in front of the burner compartment. Okay, it's going to be someplace on the burner side of things. Okay, the purpose of the rollout switch is that if the flame goes the wrong direction, if for some reason the vent stack is plugged or if there's something plugged in the heat exchanger, the flame will come out into the wiring compartment rather than go into the burners. The red button on top of both of these are a manual reset. Now, you really don't want to ever tell a customer how to reset this on their own. It's dangerous. Because if it's a rollout or a high limit, there's something that caused it to open. These don't open on their own. You have to find the cause. Now, fan limit switches are both a safety and an operating control, where the high limit and the rollout switches are safeties. Fan limit switches do two things. It controls the fan, and it also acts as a high limit switch. The fan limit switches automatically turns the fan on and off based on a preset temperature. What this does, it allows the heat exchanger to heat up before the fan comes on. In doing this, it keeps cold air be from being circulated through the ductwork. Okay, we want to hit that ductwork with as hot of air as possible before people start feeling cold drafts. The fan limit switch also has a delay in shutting the blower down. This delay allows the heat exchanger time to cool off and dissipate the furnace heat at the end of the cycle. Remember, your furnace is made of metal. There's a lot of residual heat in there that we can use to heat the building. Also, we don't want that heat exchanger to stay hot at the end of the cycle. We want to cool it off gently once the flame goes off. The temperature sensing element of the fan limit switch is called a bimetal helix, is located in the airstream near the heat exchanger. When the furnace turns on, that air is heated and the bimetal expands and closes the contacts, turning on the fan. The limit switch side of this device is a safety device. If the fan does not come on or if there's another problem causing the heat exchanger to overheat, the limit switch will open its contacts, which shuts the power to the gas valve off and thus the system shuts down. So. Now, in this case, the system will cycle on and off on high limit if the problem is not resolved. Okay, one of the things to check with limit switch problems is make sure all the ducts are, make sure all the registers are open, make sure there's return air, make sure the filter's clean, make sure the fan's coming on. Okay, so those are all things to check if you have a system that keeps bouncing on and off on high limit. So this is a why this is a pictorial wiring diagram of a, um, of a furnace. Okay, in this case, this just happens to be an oil furnace. It really doesn't matter because what I really want you to focus on is the wiring of this fan limit switch. Okay, we come in from our line voltage through a junction box into the fan limit. Now, there's a common terminal on that fan limit. One side of it goes to the fan control, which controls my fan motor. The other side of it goes to whatever my ignition control, gas valve, circuit board is, okay? So this is a dual purpose switch. One side of it is a normally open that it closes on temperature rise. And you can see this 
where my mouse pointer is. The other is a normally closed that opens on temperature rise. So the sequence of operation for this whole system is, okay, thermostat calls for heat. The flame comes on, starts warming up the furnace. At a certain temperature that's set on the helix, the, which I'll show you in a second, this fan thermostat closes, energizing the fan motor. And that blows the warm air into the home or business. Okay, If by chance the fan does not come on or the fan does not have enough capacity through the ductwork to keep this furnace from overheating, the limit switch will open at around 200 degrees, plus or minus a few degrees based on manufacture, and it will shut off the flame, but it will allow this fan to continue to run to try to cool off this furnace. This is not a manual reset control. So in a case where there's blocked duct work or an extremely dirty filter, this furnace will come on and off, on and off, on and off, almost continuously, okay, while the um, fan is attempting to keep the heat in the furnace under control. This is a picture of the fan limit settings and their functions, okay? So uh, when you look at the front of a fan limit, you have an auto manual switch. If you want to test the motor, you can pull this switch out. Sometimes it's a lever at the top, okay? And it will allow you to turn the motor, the fan motor on manually, okay? The fan off setting is your first setting. It's going to be your lowest temperature. The fan on is going to be your middle one. And the safety limit, the one you really don't want to move around from the factory setting, it's going to be the highest side. Okay, don't crank this up just to keep things from bouncing on high limit. This really want to have it around the 200 degree point. Okay, a lot of the newer furnaces with aluminum heat exchangers pull this down to 190. Okay, so the way this works is the furnace starts heating. Okay, there's flame in the furnace. This will allow the heat exchanger to heat up to the fan on point. Okay, the fan will come on. As long as we don't have any issues with safety or anything else like that, the furnace will continue to run with the fan and the flame until the thermostat is satisfied. Once the thermostat is satisfied, the flame's going to shut off, but my fan is continue, going to continue to run until the temperature of the heat exchanger drops to that fan off setting. So, and you can actually see this knob on the front of it turn. Now, this is no longer on every furnace. Some of the newer furnaces use circuit boards. <coughs> okay, now, there's different types of limit switches. Now, limit switches, again, remember, are safety devices. This is a combination of uh, safety and operating, okay? Limit switches have different appearances. This is a limit switch that actually is just a sensor, no knob, no dial. This will automatically reset. This is a limit switch that's one of those little button limit switches, has a manual reset on the front of it. Now, another type of switch we do have to a little bit talk about, not used as much anymore, but we do use it especially when we have a humidifier on the system or sometimes with electric heat. It's called a sail switch. It looks exactly as its name. It has a sail on the end of a small shaft. It's usually installed in the flue pipe or in the ductwork. It's used to sense the inducer motor operation if it's in the flue pipe. It's used to make sure that there's air flowing if it's in the ductwork. It's commonly found on rooftop units. On a call for heat, the inducer motor starts, which has to provide draft in the flute. The draft pushes the sail, which makes contact with the switch. The switch closes, sending power to the gas valve or ignition control, just starting the heat cycle. They can also be found in ductwork to prove enough airflow is being supplied. If not, it shuts the system down. So, again, High limit switches, safety devices. Most high limit switches are manual reset with a little red button on them. You do have to hunt for them sometimes, especially in furnaces that can be mounted either horizontally or vertically. Okay, and rooftop units, sometimes they're mounted behind the blower motor assembly. Okay, Co combo fan limit switches, they're both an operating control and a safety. 
And then the sail switch, you don't find them that often anymore. Um, but they all they're doing is proving that there is airflow.